All right, so it's April 27th, 2010. This is Bill from Lilac Writer, and today we got the new release 1.5 of Studio One, which uh, many of us have been anxiously awaiting. And um, I know that the community of Studio One users is extremely excited today, and I thought I would try to quickly get a uh, basic screencast out showing some of the new features. This is certainly not going to be comprehensive. I've only used this version of Studio One and the new features for oh, maybe an hour or a little more. All right, so the first thing we're going to look at is the new constrain drag. This is one of the things that um, I've wanted to see for a while. So to do this, I'm going to create a new track. I can move a piece or a clip to another track without worrying about losing my time sync. So I'll just chop up a few pieces here and then I can drag these and they stay synced up. Now if you drag them a little further, um, you know, once you've got them there, you can move them wherever you want. But as you drag them into place, they'll stay right where they need to be. So we'll, we'll quickly undo that. Now another new feature is really an option. I can now click anywhere in the project that's not something else. If I click in blank space in the project, it will move the cursor location to that point. This is a setup option. So if you want to do that, you need to go into preferences. And under the advanced tab in preferences, it's this one right here. Locate when clicked in empty space. With that enabled, now when I click in the background, this will follow. Now another thing that's um, maybe a little harder to understand unless you actually see it is this here, follow edit position. So with this engaged, the cursor follows the region as you move it. Uh, you can see what I mean. Much of the time, as you make edits, the first thing you want to do is audition it right after the move. And this is a really interesting feature to get the cursor located right where you're, it's ready to audition um, the edit that you just made. All right, so another new thing is you can split at the cursor with a key command. The default is Option X. Splitting is an extremely common operation in editing and it's nice not having to switch to the cut tool to do this where you've got a key command and I assume this is reassignable as well. Another great new feature is reassignable keyboard shortcuts. We can assign the keyboard shortcuts to be pretty much anything we want to match your own workflow. I like the Studio One shortcuts for the most part, but one thing I want to reassign is the record button. Right now, it's dedicated to the asterisk key on the numeric keypad, but when I'm operating on a laptop, uh, which I often do, there is no keypad and there's no alternative way to do that. So I'm going to assign it back to the R key, which is traditionally what was used in Cakewalk and Sonar, which is what I used to use a lot. So I'm going to find record um, related things here. So it's the transport record. You can see it's the number pad asterisk. And what I want to do is assign this to the R key. Now this key is already assigned to track record enable. So that will arm a track for recording. But I don't, I don't really need that. I can click on that to do that. So I'm going to um, override that, hit apply. And now I'm just going to test this here on this new track that I put in. I'm in record. And now record can be um, turned on and off with the R key. The next thing is the tap tempo function, at least on my MacBook, and I presume other people using uh, MacBooks, didn't work. But now tap tempo is working. So if I just tap out the tempo on the word tempo, it'll set it 
change that back. Yeah, interesting. All right, so the next thing that we want to cover is the support for Rex files. You can now drag Rex files directly into the timeline. So I found um, in my loop library some Rex files. And uh, if I just pull that in, then you can see that they work like uh, pretty much any other type of uh, loop where um, and the same thing goes for Apple loops so if you've got Apple loops uh, like the Apple loops for GarageBand you can also drag these right into your project So that's a great new capability. All right, so if you're using um, Superior Drummer, uh, which I have going in this pro project, um, or another similar drum instrument, you now can uh, use uh, drum maps, which I'll show you here. So once you go into the, I double clicked on a region to go into the MIDI editor, and I'll click on the drum icon. And from here, if you click on this edit pitch names, you can choose um, from GM drums, but if you have a drum map defined, then you can put in the map that will give you the correct names for all of the drum sounds. So I do happen to have the custom and vintage drum set loaded from Superior Drummer. And you'll see all the names show up here. Now this requires that you put in the correct um, instrument name or uh, drum map that has all the uh, note names defined. And I got these from the forum user uh, Motoko who uploaded these earlier today or right after the 1.5 release came out. And his set of uh, pitch name maps covers uh, a wide variety of the most popular drum instruments. And it's very handy because you can see the names of the instruments right on the uh, piano roll view when you're editing the MIDI notes. All right, so that's just touching on a very few things. There's tons of new uh, content. The export stems across the board. There's um, upgrades. And uh, so we're really just starting to get into that. But anyway, I thought I'd touch on a few of the ones related to editing. And uh, I'm sure we'll be back more with um, some additional ones in the near future. Thank you very much.